What's up, YouTube? It's the Dawn, where shit gets real. And today, guys, I'm going to keep it real with you guys, and I'm going to be talking about this IPv4. Bam. Um, <clears throat> I got the gray version and the black version. So let's just start off with the negatives. I'm not going. This is not going to be a traditional review. Um, I'm, I will do an up and close to you on the black, but um, basically, I'm not going to be sitting here trying to give you all the specs of it. You guys probably already seen that. Um, but I will talk about some issues. So this is going to be more or less like, you know, a talk about. So let's just talk about this IPv4. Okay, so first, let's just start with the negative. I'm just going to, because it, it's, it's, I like this device, but there's a lot of negatives with it. Let's start with the box, okay? Um, the container that it comes in and the instructions, okay? So the instructions tells you that you can lock the device by holding a plus and minus. That's a no-go. You can't when you do that, all of you guys that own one know that's how you set your resistance. So, Pioneer for you, you know, you guys should fix that. Um, another thing that's in instructions that's incorrect that you probably already heard, they talk about the touch sensor. There's no touch sensor on here. Now, I know it's upgradable, and if you can send a, a, a touch sensor through through the upgrade process, you're the man. You're, you're, that's some good shit. And I doubt if you can do that. Another thing that's wrong with this, it says it goes down to 7 watts. For the life of me, I cannot get this thing to go down to 7 watts. It stops at 10 watts. So if the device is at 10 watts, you should put 10 watts in here. Um, some people may want 10, uh, 7 watts or 8 watts or 9 watts. Um, I know when I'm firing nickel, I want to start off really low. I might need the 7 watts. So if, if, it, if you're going to say it does that, you know, Make it do that, or if it doesn't do it, don't say it does that. Okay, so and you know it, the fire. I mean, the, the I guess the biggest issue with this right here is you cannot lock it. Okay, now maybe somebody else figure out how to lock it, but for the life of me, I cannot. I, I can't lock this device. The only thing I can do is turn it off. So I don't like a device that you can't particularly lock. Um, you know, sometimes devices <laughs> that lock on their own can be a headache. But if, when you think about it, for the safety aspect, I would, I would much rather have a device lock, okay, um, or time out and make it make it so you have to hit a couple buttons a couple times after, you know, a little while. Um, but it, there's no lock, okay. The charging port. Everybody and their mama knows that these charging ports are janky, okay. So take the charging port out. Now, right now, I've got this. Uh, I got a temp build in here, but let me see. Yes, <laughs> there is juice in there. Look at that. That's from last night from me overdripping. Let me wipe that out. It's not from this build, but it's from last night from overdripping. And of course, there's already pictures on the internet where somebody said juice got in there and they went to charge it and it caught on fire. Okay, so I noticed that you know. Every time Pioneer for You comes out with a, di a device before Sigeli or Sigley or however you want to say it, there's always a whole bunch of bullshit, you know, with these devices. So Pioneer for You, just to cut out the bullshit, don't even put a charger port on there. And people, don't go out and try to find a charging port that fixes this, that fits it, and go out and tell other people, oh, this one works. You know what? Spend that money on a good you know, two bay, four bay, six bay, eight bay, uh, 18650 charger, or, you know, one of those universal chargers that can charge more than, you know, one type of battery. Your money's better spent on that. You know, your batteries are better uh, charged with that. You're going to have better battery life out of your batteries from charging it when one of those nice chargers versus charging it in this, okay? So, take the charger out, pour it out. Now, as far as the fit and finish on this, it's it's not horrible and it's not perfect, okay? Um, but me, this is just my opinion, okay? I don't expect a Rolex type device for eighty bucks. Um, I don't. I, I really don't. I expect just what I'm getting. You know, a cheap China device. It's eighty bucks. You know, some places were selling for sixty something bucks. So. Think about how much the wholesalers were getting them for, and then think about how much Pioneer for you is actually selling them for. Think about how much they sell the chip for, and then think about how much they sell the whole thing put together for. So you got to know this is 
this is not Rolex type. This is Timex all day long. Okay, even though they make some nice Timexes, this is the you know, run of the mill, the Timex that you're going to find in Kmart. So I don't expect, you know, perfect craftsmanship. Me, that's me. Some of you guys do, and I see it every day. Oh, this is not lined up correctly. Uh, this, I don't expect that. Um, not with a device like this. Now, I know I, I got on the SX uh, Mini. That's because everybody else, oh, it's so perfect. So, so when I was looking at the SX, I was looking at it like, okay, this better be a Rolex type device. And to me, it wasn't. Okay. Um, so this one right here, this is not bad. To me, it's not bad. I mean, um, it's very basic. Okay. Um, I thought it was going to be ugly when I first, you know, when I first saw the pictures with this Hickama Jiggle on it. Um, but actually, this makes holding the device, the, the device uh, actually very comfortable. Um, and I kind of dig it. Um, it's easy to get to the batteries. Um, it's very comfortable in the hand. Um, you know, I haven't had any problems with my device getting hot. But I'm sure if it did get hot, um, this probably would make it much more manageable to hold if it was hot. Now, I have left it in my car and... You know, on a hot day, and when I got in the car, the metal part was a little warm from it being in the sun. Um, but as far as me firing it and getting hot, never had an issue. And I'm going to do a couple little tests today um, to talk about that. So let me take this. Let me take a toe to this nickel and put something else on it. Okay. So there's a video going out around where a guy. <clears throat> um, it's calling this a PSA, a public service announcement about the Pioneer for you. Now, here's my problem with this video, okay? Now, here's my problem with the whole situation. It's obvious <clears throat> if what he says is going on, he's got a bad device. Let's be clear. He's got a bad device. And for those of you that with, you know, a good portion of your brain working, know that Devices that come out of China, their quality control is a little bit different. So it's very possible for you to get a bad device. It, it happens. So knowing that, you know, if your intelligence level is that at that point where you know, hey, I got a bad device, you should know better than to keep making videos with your bad device, bad talk in the company, because guess what? Shit happens. I talked about it in another video. I think I used a car as an example. Okay. <clears throat> so, right now, I am going to rock this baby at 100 watts. Okay? Because I keep hearing people say, oh, the device gets hot. So, today I have a temperature gun. Okay? And right now I have a freak show on here, and it's, uh, let's see, it's a .25 build in here. Let me get this bad boy up to 100 watts. It's a .25 build in here, and I can vape it at 100 watts, okay? So, let's not confuse the Addy getting hot. <laughs> And transferring the heat to the mod, okay? So what I'm going to do, to be fair, is I'm going to leave a slight gap. Let me make sure it fires. A slight gap. And right now, I'm going to take the temperature of it. And I'm going to take some, some pulls, okay? Seventy-eight degrees, okay? Let me take it towards the top. Can you see that little dot on there? 76 degrees. Okay, let me do it again because that was a little different. 78. Let's do the side. 78. Let's do the plastic. 80. 81, let's do the pl this plastic, 85, and that's probably from my hand, you know, holding it, okay? So, I'm vaping at 100 watts, ready to, ready to run. 
Let's make sure I don't do no dry hits. <coughs> uh, let's, let's, let's vape some thirst. All right, let me wet this up a little bit. Put some more liquid on it. And while I'm vaping, let me tell you this. So this guy makes a video. He says, oh, he puts a battery in it. And he says, oh, the device is hot. He puts one battery and the device is hot. Today I'm going to do that. He says, oh, the battery drained, uh, the, 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 ba the device drained the battery below 2 volts or whatever, 3 volts, whatever it was, it below that. So what I did, I recorded. I had two batteries in here. Let me take a toe. I recorded. I had two batteries in here. And every time I hit the button, it would say check battery. It was dead. I mean, and I left that thing on there for a half an hour. And I kept hitting the button, kept hitting the button, kept hitting the button. Until the point where, when you hit the button, it would just say check battery. At first, it would fire a little bit and then say check battery. But when, as you see, and when I cut through this little recording I did on my cell phone, and then I throw it on the charger so you can see what volts, you know, it, it was at. And it didn't go below the safety level. So let me take another tote. I'm just trying to get this thing hot, you know. <clears throat> Some juice just spit all over the device. I guess that's that juice is gonna make the device hot. I shouldn't have did that. <coughs> wipe that off. All right, so let's take some more temperatures. Okay, so let's go to the screen. Eighty degrees. Let's go to the top. Eighty-two degrees. Let's go to the atomizer. I can't be right. 83 degrees. Let's go to the side. 82 degrees. Let's go to the bottom. 81, 81 degrees. Okay? So the atomizer is not even hot. Well, it, it's not it's not really hot. <laughs> I thought it would be hotter than that. So let's keep going. Drip tips hot. Drip tips 103. Atomizer is now 102. <clears throat> the device is still 83. The side of the device is 79. Back here, where's a little juice? 84. The plastic is 83. The bottom is 82. Okay? So, I'm vaping at 100 watts, and it's not even budging. You know what? Now, I haven't touched this device since I've been recording. Let's just take a temperature of this device. 73. Okay? The top. 72. 72. This device is not even getting warm like what I can tell in my hand. It's not warm at all. Let me keep going. Okay. So, the device, you know, I just did that really quick. The device, you know, vaping it at high wattage, it's maxed out. Um, right now it is at 5.09 volts. I'm sure it does go higher than that in volt in volts, but <clears throat> it's it's not even getting like warm. It's 
it's it's maintaining its same temperature okay so now I'm sure if I screw this atomizer down and this is 102 degrees this is going to transfer some of that heat to this casing okay so the device let me open it up and see how hot it is inside <clears throat> the batteries 86 I see that little battery wall 81 I see this part over here 82 okay so the device itself is not getting hot not at all um, it, it it's, it's maintaining its same temperature. Let me take a tote with it all the way down with the Addy touching the actual device. <coughs> I'm bringing a nick high. Um, let me show you all what I got in here. I got some dual gauge I mean I can't even talk right now I got some a dual coils that's 22 gauge and I believe it's like eight or nine wraps around a three mil uh, screwdriver that drip tip is hot Drip tip, 104, <clears throat> Addy, 93, IPV, 83, top of IPV, 85. All right, so what I'm going to do, because this video is going to be super long, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut to that video of me taking the batteries out and putting them on the charger when it was completely dead. And then I'm going to come back, and then I'm going to do this test where the guy puts one battery in and says, oh, the device is getting so hot. You already know the device is not going to get hot. And before I cut to that video, just let me say this. <clears throat> Dude, if you got a bad device, send that device back. Don't sit there and try to make it out to say that all IPVs are junk because you got a junk one. Now, it's understandable that you've gotten a junk one. It happens. They sent you, you, a janky device. Not all of them are like that. You have a bad one. So since you have a bad one, why are you doing all these tests on this bad one? It's already, you, you already proven the point where well, you've told us that it's bad. <clears throat> but in your videos, you just say it's bad. And then you show us a bad battery. Now, I know that my VTC5s that I own, <clears throat> my real ones, they're at their end of their life. You know, they, they went through hell. Um, I, I know you put your VTC fives through hell because you knew they took hell. Um, so the ones that I still own, I own four of them. Two of them are bad. They don't hold charges. They, you know, they still work, but they're on their last leg. And my thing is, you maybe those batteries were on their last leg. Um, that's possible. Or maybe your device is a bad one. But stop keep making all these random videos with that same bad device and then trying to say, oh, it's a PSA. The PSA is, hey, I got a bad device. Not, not oh, they're all of them are bad. Then you sit there and say, oh, you know what? It's not efficient. It doesn't, it's not as accurate. There's very few of them that are 100% accurate. Go check out Phil Prasado's videos. He breaks it down. Some of the best ones that he's tested, they're not 100% accurate. And I believe in this one, it says 90, 96%, 96%, something like that. Um, I don't know. None of them are ac accurate. None of them. It, it's close. You know, if you're vaping at 100 watts, right now, right now I probably was vaping at 90 watts or, or 92 watts. 10% off. Who gives a fuck? It, it's not like you're, it's not that serious. Some of the, the most expensive chips, they're not 100% accurate across the whole board, or across the whole spectrum. They're not. They're, you know, up or down. Um, it depends on what, what you have on there. It's up and, so none of them are perfect. So, dude, you know, I think that was real, it was real weak for you to continue to make videos on something when you had a bad device. So let's just cut down to that video right now. Okay, so here's my IPV for 
this thing with focus. All right, you see the battery, it's dead. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the button. Check battery. Now I've been doing this shit for like the last 10 minutes, right? Sometimes it fires, sometimes it just does that. Okay, so let me snatch these batteries out. Uh, let's see. Right, let's start with this one. Try to leave it on camera. Alright, let's see what that says. Three point two nine volts. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that three point yeah, three point two volts. Two nine volts. Okay. Now three point three. Okay, so let's take this one out. And let's take this one. I remember how this thing springs. Right, let's put this one in there. That one is 2. Point, I mean 3.27 volts. Okay? So it looks like as you can see, I had been firing that shit for a while. As you can see, it looks like it does not take the batteries below 3.2 volts within you know and not firing it okay so just wanted to show you guys that all right guys <clears throat> so I guess one thing I should talk about is the paint chipping okay so on this one the only place the paint has chipped <clears throat> was here okay so if you look right there there is a little chip now I don't know what one of my Addies caused it um, but it's very recent. Um, now, as far as the sides um, and where I hold it, it has not been chipping anywhere. Okay. Um, now, I haven't like put Windex on the screen, so you probably see like minor imperfections in it because it's dirty. Um, the buttons, I like the buttons. They're nice and they they're not super clicky. They uh. It, it, it's different. It, I, I like the feel of the button, and I really like the feel of the fire button. But it's not like a clicky, clicky. It's it's almost like a. It's not mushy. It feels like it's some rubber in there. It's um, <clears throat> it's a nice uh, fire to me. Now here's the bottom. Um, you know, has battery pinning. I haven't had any problems with the paint coming off except for there and that's from scoring addies on and off i'm assuming i'm thinking that's probably one particular addy or something i did all right so let's just take this <coughs> rubber piece off the battery case now <coughs> this does look kind of cheap and flimsy the way you put these batteries in the spring on the bottom it seems kind of seems it just it just seems like it, it, it could break. Um, it doesn't seem like the best design. Um, but I haven't had any problems with this one or my silver one. And on the top, it's the same way. This is kind of kind of loose. Um, but once you put your batteries in there, you know, the pressure of it keeps it, you know, firm. Okay? I mean, it's... It's the black one. That's all. Um, no problems. So I showed you at first. It's got a spring-loaded 510. Um, I don't have anything to push that down. No blue screwdrivers around. But yes, it is spring-loaded. Everything I screwed on there has fit flush. Um, like I said, I can screw it down a couple turns. Um, and it starts making contact with that spring about right there. That's why I was able to fire it without this touching the actual base. <clears throat> so let's put the batteries back in. Turn it on. It says, time for you. Five clicks to turn it on. Now, 
there are some uh, applications out there where you can change your uh, you can change your screen. <clears throat> um, I see they're starting to get popular on the SX. There's one guy that has tool when you first turn it on it says tool. There's another guy that has it when you first turn it on it says uh, his name. Um, so you can there are programs out there where you can play with the actual design. Like you can hit the it says check atomizer. You can make it say something else. Um, so yeah, I'm not real good with that, so I'm not going to go into that. Just do a search. <clears throat> So yeah, that's it up close, just in a nutshell. Let's go up top and let's say goodbye. All right. So I went, you know, a quick up and closey as well um, with the batteries. So as you can see, it does not uh, discharge your batteries lower than 3.2 volts. Okay, so you know, it looks like. It was right at that 3.3, but me continuously, you know, hitting that fire button for 10 minutes might have brought it down to 3.29, 3.28. It did not go below that threshold of 3.2, okay, like somebody is claiming it that it did. Um, now, like I say all the time, it, it, you, dude, you probably got a bad device, but I'm just so pissed that you, you keep making part one, three, four, you know, all these different parts like your fucking fast and the furious dude or something um for that one bad device it's that's not a good deal that's not a good deal um <clears throat> um should really take that shit down you, you should make a video hey i got a bad device and i had to send it back um because <clears throat> too many people want to jump on a bandwagon and especially you know too many sigley or sigelli lovers they, they they love that shit they love it love it love it and it seems like every time Pioneer for you comes out with a device um, before Sig League or Sigelli, they they do that. You know, I almost think it's a marketing scheme um, because the guy mentions Sigelli more than once. So, <laughs> um, and Sigelli right now does not have a hundred watt temperature control device that's on the market. Why are you comparing it to something else? Um, but anyway, my final thoughts on this thing: I really like it. For the price, for the bang for the buck factor, it's a plus. It's two thumbs up for that. Bang for your buck, 80 bucks, you get 100 watts, you get two batteries, you know, you get, you know, long battery life, you get great, great temp temperature control. Me personally, I like it better than the DNA 40s. Um, I haven't played with their new, where you can lock the, 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 lock the uh, resistance. I haven't played with one of those. Um, but... As far as the temps that's out on the market right now, whether it's the uh, the backwards engineered DNA 40s or the SXs, um, this is 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 solid. It's it's solid. Um, and what you get for your for your money, you know, I like I said in the first part, I don't expect Rolex uh, style device for under a hundred bucks. Um, I just don't. That's just me. Maybe you expect more. Maybe you expect, you know, to look at it and it's got to be perfect everywhere. Me, I don't. Cause I, it's a fucking, it's a fucking box, okay? And to be real with you, you know, these things take a lot of abuse. Um, if I wanted something, you know, designer, I would go buy something designer. I would not expect this right here to be, you know, a fucking Rolex style, uh, verbal wattage, verbal voltage temperature control device for 80 bucks. <laughs> it's 80 bucks. Let me take a tote. It's 80 bucks. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it for 80 bucks. Um, it, 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 like I said, the, the first one with that fucking screen on it was some bullshit. It, it's some bullshit. Um, the fucking instructions is some bullshit. Um, um, but the way it performs, um, you know, I, I think it's going to, me, you know, it hasn't been, you know, six months. But I believe it's probably going to hold up just as well as my other Pioneer for You devices. And trust me, I beat them things to fucking death. And they still fire. Um, there's, a, there's a guy on my Facebook group, you know, he builds all these crazy builds and... <clears throat> 
I mean, crazy builds. And 99.9% of the time when he's building crazy shit, he's still rocking his IPv3. I forget his name. Um, he's got a big old beard. He's always like in a machine shop. <clears throat> um, he He's always got an IPv3 or like an iStick 50 watt. But most of the time he's with that IPv3. You know, it, 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 they're solid devices. Um, but anyway, let me wrap this up. If you know somebody that's on the stinkies and you see them more than once or twice a week, um, and you have some old equipment, you have some juice that's too high of a nick that you don't, you know, vape anymore, give it to them. Tell them, hey, try this out for a week. Check back with me after that week, maybe two weeks. Check back with me. Tell me if you like it. If you like it, I'll tell you where to buy it. And if you if they do like it, try to get them, you know, a 20, 30 watt device, something that they can grow into or they can grow with. Try not to, to advise them to get like a little pin because you really stuck, you're really limited to what you can put on top of that pin. At least with a 30 watt device, you can, you know, buy a sub ohm clearomizer. Um, you can buy a dripper. You can still rock clearos on it. You can do a lot with a 30 watt device. Yes, you can build drippers with a 30 watt device and get a fantastic vape. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, sorry if this was more or less a rant um, or, you know, paying so much attention to one particular person. But it was just, I kept seeing this video it was just popping up everywhere. And it was just like, really? Really? You got a bad device. Nobody else is saying, you know what? Okay, you got a bad device. Why the fuck are you making 20 videos on one device? That's bad. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's bad. It's like I got a TV. I got a Sony TV and the fucking LEDs went out first week. Right? So now I make a video and say, oh, LEDs went out. And then the next week I make another video and say, oh, look. You can't even see the picture. Then I make another video and say, oh, you know, look look at this. It's it's It sucks. It's, it's not... HD. The fucking LEDs went out. Now, and then I'm sitting there saying, oh, Sony sucks. Sony sucks ass. You know, Sony don't know what they're doing. It's not right. Dude, you got a bad one. Go get another TV. Go get another device. Then make that video. Because, you know, shit happens. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, pay it forward.